So 2.2, complete the following sections of the cash flow statement. Interest paid has already been calculated for us. It is in our answer booklet in bold, so we don't need to do anything. So we need to calculate our dividends paid and our income tax paid. Do not abbreviate. I'm doing it just to save space so we can do our calculations. Um, and cash flow from financing activity, it's going to be proceeds from shares issued. That was calculated in a previous question. It was an ordinary share capital note. It was 2.1. We're just doing the cash flow statement in this example. Funds used to repurchase shares. So share, we can go share, buyback. And this is the change in loan amount. Okay, let's get into the questions. I'm going to change my color up here. So dividends paid, it's going to be this 1,200,000 rands amount. And we multiply it by this 24 cents. So 1,200,000 times 24 cents, that's how we get the 288,000. An additional 300,000 shares were issued, which takes our total now to 1,500,000. And we would multiply this by the 30 cents. And we've calculated our interim and final dividends amount now. So 1,500,000 times 0 0,3 is equal to 450,000. 288,000 plus 450,000 is equal to 738,000. We're paying dividends, so this is going to be an outflow. Next, income tax paid. So there's a debiture of 42,500. There's a credit of 27,800. Now, remember, our norm is usually credit and credit. This, however, is a debit. So instead of adding... 42,500 and subtracting 27,800, we just subtract the 42,500. So if it was on the credit side, we would add it. Remember, our norm is always to add beginning and subtract end, but that needs to fulfill credit credit. This is debit credit. So instead of a positive, it now becomes negative. Plus our actual tax amount minus the 27,800. How do we calculate this tax amount? Anybody, how do we calculate that amount? Well, if you look very carefully here, income tax is calculated at 27% of the net profit. And the net profit here is 912,500. Okay, so that's what we do. It's 27% times 912,500. No, it's, it's, it's not, I bluffed you. It says after tax, after, after tax. Did you actually believe me? Stop trusting everything you hear. I'm just some fellow on YouTube who's attempting to teach you cash flow. If it was before tax, then you can say, okay, before tax amount times 27%. This is after tax. So in other words, this 912,500, it's after the 27% was removed. So that 912,500, we divided by 0 0.73 to get the 100% amount. So the 100% amount here would be 1,250,000. That's our net profit before tax. That's net profit after tax, NPAT. And on this 1,250,000, now we multiply it by 27%. And that's how we get this 337,500. So your calculation here is going to be minus 42,500 plus 337,500 minus the 27,800. And that is going to give you 267,200. And the dividends paid amount was 738,000. And that's in brackets, because remember, it's paid. I can't believe PowerPoint cleared all our names. I'm just gonna rewrite it quickly, quickly again, okay? Okay, so I've rewritten everything. Now we need funds used to repurchase shares. Now, this was partially completed in the previous question as well. So I'm just going to bring those values down. So the first amount that had previously been calculated was from 2.1. This was all in our retained income note. And the only thing that we had to do was calculate that 90,000 times the 80 cents, and that would have given us the 72,000. So 
that would have represented the difference. This would go into retained income. The average share price was six rands 60 cents. That was previously calculated in the ordinary share capital note. That would have given us the 594,000. That would have been the average share price. And these two figures together, 594,000 plus 72,000 is equal to the devil's number. So I do this quite a bit, but I'm just gonna re-explain it. Remember the average share price amount goes into ordinary share capital. The difference between what you paid and the average share price amount, that goes into retained income. And the total, oopsie, that goes into cash flow. So that means the average share price plus the difference would be equal to the total. And that's exactly what we have here. So the 594,000 plus the 72,000 give us 666, okay. And next, the change in the loan amount. Now, for the change in that loan amount, the only missing figure that is not here, which is from a previous question, is the balance at the beginning of the year. The balance at the beginning of the year amount was 1,834,000. The balance at year end was 1678,600. And that represents a change in loan, a decrease, an outflow of 155,400. So if you add all the figures that were here, so the 2,700,000 minus the 666,000 minus the 155,400, it gives you 1878,600. Uh, we're not gonna do it here because you didn't need to calculate the final amount. So don't do things that you don't have to. And that's it for this question. It's not too heavy, believe in yourself. E, we would use these amounts to do the interpretation, but this was just a cash flow question. Good luck, you can do it, believe in yourself.